that is here this morning. Thank the Lord because he has begun the good work we finished for his own glory. Thank the Lord for your lives that you are here and the glory of the Lord is resting mightily upon you. Thank the Lord, not only you at home as well, where you live and the children. I just want you to appreciate God this morning. Begin to thank him, please. Close your eyes, don't be distracted, don't be looking everywhere, concentrate. And we need to give him a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Thank him. Thank him you can breathe. Thank him that you, they are not carrying you anywhere. You carried yourself by the help of the Holy Spirit. Thank the Lord. Thank him. He's alive. And alive forevermore. Thank the Lord. Thank him. And that with him, nothing shall be impossible. Thank him. Thank you for the miracle you are expecting this morning. Thank you for transforming your lives. Thank you for removing you from darkness. You are now in the marvelous light. You are now sons of God, not just a child of God. Thank him. There's a lot of things to thank him for. Thank him that you, the enemy did not have a last say in your life. Thank that the expectation of the wicked be so fulfilled in your life. Thank the Lord that began the good work we finish it for his own glory. Thank the Lord. And praise him. Forget about what you are going through. Just lift up your hands. Your heart. Be lifted up with your hands and begin to praise him. Begin to thank him. Thanksgiving is so powerful. Thanksgiving is a weapon against your enemy. Thanksgiving is making God higher than your enemies. Begin to thank him. Forget about your circumstance situation. Wherever you are in the world in this service, just to thank him. Not to complain, not to murmur. When you thank him, the possible become possible. When you begin to thank him, the light begins to shine on the darkness. When you begin to thank the Lord, a lot of unusual things to your own advantage begin to happen. And then begin to welcome the Holy Spirit, the one who's going to minister to us, a perfect teacher. Oh, 
thank you. We ask and pray that the message you are about to hear, this message make us deeper in you, more stronger than what we were before, and also turn the captivity to nothing. And the glory of the Lord will rest upon everyone in this service worldwide. And the thing we have never experienced before spiritually, physically, materially, financially, health-wise, will begin to show up for us. Amen. We also ask and pray, Lord, that the word we are going to hear, a grafted word of God that is able to save us all, we take us deeper, 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 deeper. Until when the enemy, they see us spiritually, physically, they will fall down and we bow to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Just want you to turn around and look at your brothers and sisters and say, I love you. Amen. Again, tell him, I'm not talking about husband and wife. This is not husband and wife here. Okay. I love you. I love you with the love of the Lord. Okay? Amen. Be your brother's keeper. It's the love. The message this morning, without even wasting time, is how to praise God during adversity. How to praise God during what? Adversity. And we are taking our text from 2 Chronicles chapter 20, from verses 1 to 25. And other scriptures. This is part three or five series on rejoice. Remember, we are still on Philippians 4 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. How to praise God during your adversity? Have you forgotten? I'm just, I want to talk a little bit about adversity before I start doing the introduction. Who is your adversary? Who is your adversary? It's not your wife. It's not your husband. They are not, it's not your children. It's not anybody. He said, Satan is the adversary. How do we know? First Peter 5, it may declare. He said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He's the one that devours everything. But we thank God, as he's walking about, Jesus is watching to bring you out of his net. He will never devour you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to know that the adversity cannot be avoided. You can't avoid it. It's unexpected. Just come. And when it comes, the way you react will determine whether you be a winner or a victor. Whether you be a victim or you're a victor. Or you're going to be an overcomer or be overcome. It's your reaction. And that's why Ephesians 4, 27 may declare. Neither give the devil a place. How do you give the devil a place in your life? When you yield to what he's asking you to do. When you yield to what he's asking, what are the things? The works of the flesh. Asking you to lie. Asking you to get angry. Asking you to start shouting. Asking you to start saying things that are not right with your mouth. The same mouth you use in praising or worshiping him. Terrible things are coming out of your mouth. All repeat, you just keep on repeating, repeating it. That's not the Holy Spirit. But we thank God. It can be dealt with with Jesus Christ and with the enablement and power of the Holy Spirit. It starts with the joy. Philippians 4, 4. Rejoice always in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. Have you ever wondered why this repetition? Why is it repeating the word? Rejoice. When the Lord is repeating certain things, he's setting you, focus on what I'm saying. Don't allow to escape your mind. Rejoice. And when you begin to rejoice, what happens to the problem you are going through begin to diminish. Joy can operate both offensive and, and, the, and the defensive weapon. Depends on the way it is used. When 
the Lord said, rejoice in the, world, in the Lord always twice, repeatedly. He's telling you that it's a command. It's not an option. It's not a choice. You don't say, okay, I have a choice. I can live in sorrow. I can live in joy. How many of you want to live in sorrow here? Nobody. How many of you want to live in joy? I want to live in joy. Because when I'm full of joy, the Holy Ghost will begin to operate better than ever before in my life. Say Jericho, amen. amen. So do you know when you are rejoicing, a lot of things begin to happen. Not only Philippians 4, 4, and some other verses. Was Corinthians, no, first Thessalonians 5, 16. It said, rejoice evermore. Rejoice evermore. It means it's, you have no end until you see Jesus. Rejoice evermore. And as you are rejoicing evermore, you cannot rejoice evermore just like that with thanksgiving. Said in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. Take your eyes away from yourself. Take your eyes away from. See, when the children, they are messing up and etc., those focus on their mess and begin to deal with them according to their mess. What do you do? You deal with them according to what God has asked you to do. You still love them. Husband, you say, love your wife. wife love your, your husband. Mother, love your children. Father, love your children. That's the will of God for you. Say amen to that. Amen. amen. If you rejoice in the law, what happened? That's, I call this self-deliverance. You are ministry deliverance on yourself. Because Nehemiah chapter 8, 10, make it, say, make it clear. He said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. True or false? The joy of the Lord is your strength. How do we enter into the atmosphere of joy and become, have, that, that joy becomes strength? By recalling the Lord's grace, the nearness, and the promise. We are not only to rejoice when things are going on well in our life. The best time to know those who are actually proper children of God, children of God, the proper child of God or children of God, is when something happens that shakes others. But when you are also experiencing which is adversity, it does not shake you. It gets, make you better and better, take you deeper and deeper. Because you know after the whole incident of adversity, you are going to be better than what we were before. Say amen. Amen. And that's why the Lord is asking us to rejoice. I also want you to know that rejoice is from the word joy. And joy is number two of the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love and then joy. Once joy comes into your life, you can never remain the same again. It just nullifies the sorrows, the grief, and the mercy. It's very important. Joy comes from the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5.22 is number two of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's only the Holy Spirit comes from. Joy comes from the Holy Spirit as you begin to praise and thank God for what he has done. Instead of weeping and murmuring and complaining, oh, I keep on failing my exams. I don't know what, I, why am I going to rejoice? My business is not going on. Everything I have, I've invested. You are telling me to rejoice. I'm not going to rejoice. But I rejoice, don't rejoice. Does it talk to your, 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 your business, to your failure? But when you begin to rejoice, something begins to happen. It's so important. Instead of weeping, reciting pain and grief, which actually Satan's joy, your sorrow is Satan's what? Joy. Do you get my point? Your own sorrow, your complaining, your grief, your murmuring. Who's joy? Say Satan. Mm. It's Satan's joy. So you are not going to make Satan to be happy. How I many of you want Satan to be happy in your life? God forbid. Say God forbid. God forbid. He cannot rejoice over me. Rejoice I said it in Jesus' name. Why do you think Psalm 34 from verses 1 says, we are reading it together. I'm not quoting it. Go to Psalm 34, powerful scripture, from verses 1 to 4. We sing it in the church here. We sing it all the time. Even our tongue, we learn how to be singing it. When we sing it here, sing it deeper. Psalm 34, we read from verses 1 to 4. 
I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be what? In my mouth. Let's go. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I saw the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Why not clap for the Lord? <laughs> 34 and 34 verse 4 just summarized what you are to do during your adversity. You ever seen somebody went to bed, there was nothing wrong with him. When he got up in the morning, he can't talk. He got up in the morning, he can't move. What are you supposed to do at that state? Are you supposed to be dialing the doctors and say, what time are you opening? No. I'll give you an, an, incident, an, an, an example I made. Mean. He went to bed, nothing was wrong, and etc. And that day was the day he was supposed to do the common entrance. There was nothing wrong with that. Then I look at the time. I said, you are still in bed at this time. Went to her room. You are still in bed at this time. Get up. Don't you have an exam today? He said, mommy, I've been trying for the past 15 minutes to come down. I cannot. That's what I'm saying. Will I be crying? Oh, you will not cry. If you cry, Satan rejoices. Will I be complaining? Am I serving God? I'm serving, I'm not serving the devil now. Why is this happening to me? Does he make things better? So I said, now come down again. No, this, if I not come down. So what did I do? I just knelt down beside her bed. I said, Lord, I take authority. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Against every contrary spirit that is making her not to come down because the wickedness knew that this morning she has an exam. I said, The strength of the Lord, I release it into your bones, into your marrow, into your spirit. Get out of that bed. And I saw her got up, she fell down on the floor. I said, Get up. This said, Fall down. I said, Get up. And I begin to talk again. As I was talking, I said, Walk. And then she began to walk. Begin to give glory to God. I begin to thank the Lord. I say, Lord, I thank you. I say, Satan, whether you like it or not, you go for that common entrance. She will do it. She will come out number one. I said, I'm not asking for number two. When I pray for my sons and daughters in this church worldwide, I don't believe in second position. Always number one. That's my style. I pray for my biological children, and it's, real, it's a reality, and that's every one of them, one to five. I'm still praying it for my, my uh, spiritual children. The few I've prayed for, about five of them is first class. First class. Not just first class, academically, throughout the rest of their lives, anywhere they go is first class. Amen. Amen? Amen. So we are not to take this wickedness for granted. We all need joy, not the joy of the world. I'm talking about the joy of the world. The joy of the world is limited. When something, your business is doing well, and children, they pass their exam, oh, you are happy. But when they are not doing well, again, what happened to you? You are crying. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about everlasting joy. There are no, no bounds, no limits, no stress, not stressful. It just comes from your heart, Holy Spirit. And when you begin, to rehearse it, it rehearse the joy, not the pain. Something begins to happen. That's my prayer for you. Amen. I'm a prayer for myself as well. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now let us quickly go to the text. Second Chronicle chapter 20. The verses are long, but uh, there's nothing I can do about it. Because we want to get the true detail of this message. Second Chronicles chapter 20. If you have your Bible, please take your Bible open. it. Don't be looking at the screen. The screen are for those visitors who are new. They didn't come with their Bible, not for adults. Remove your hand and take your Bible, please, and begin to look at your Bible. You can't have a Bible and start peeping at somebody else's Bible. 
You cannot have your Bible and say, say, please, can I share with you? There's no sharing in heaven. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. There's no sharing of anything in heaven. It's one on one. You can't share your Bible with your husband. You can't share your Bible with your wife. You can't share your Bible with your children. You can't share. No. We even have Bible for the visitors. You cannot even share your Bible with visitors. We have Bibles. So that those who don't have Bible, as they raise up their hands, we give them their own Bible. It's a, an individual race. It's not collective race. It came to pass after this also, that the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. There came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, there come a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on the side of Syria. And behold, there be a Hazama, which is Engedi. Jehoshaphat feared, and Jehoshaphat feared. And said himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord before the new court, and said, O oh Lord God of our fathers, are not thou God in heaven, that rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the hidden? And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Are not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel? I gave thy seed to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever. And they dwell therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil cometh upon us as a sword judgment or pestilence or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, that thou will hear and help. And now behold, the children of Ammon, Ammon, Amamsia, whom thou wouldest not let Israel evade when they came out of the land of Egypt. But they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of their possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. Oh, our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, Neither know we what to do, but eyes are upon thee. Hallelujah. That's a powerful prayer. Our eyes are upon thee. You know that was a little my eyes to the heat from West Command, my head. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives and their children. Then upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Bena, the son of Jehel, the son of Metaniah. The Levite of the sons of Art came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, How can ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat, thou says the Lord unto you, not unto them, unto you, be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, go ye down against them. Behold, they came up by the cliff of seas. And you shall find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of Jerod. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself stand, ye still. And see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah, O rivers of water ministry. And Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you, will be with us. Amen. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all the Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. The Levites, the children of the Kolahats, and of the children of the Kotahs, stood up to praise the Lord, God of Israel, with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning, and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. 
Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. And when he has consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness. As they went out before the army, and to say, praise the Lord for his mercies endure forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, hallelujah, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mausia, which were come against Judah, and they were what? Smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mausia, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came to, towards the one tower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, there were dead bodies falling to the earth, and none escaped. And when Joshua and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they slip off for themselves more than they could carry away. They were Three days in gathering of the spoil, it was so much. If that is your testimony, stand up and begin to claim it. Stand up and begin to claim it. As the Lord has said, an ambushment against your enemy, they will help each other to destroy themselves. He will confound your languages. They will not understand each other to defend themselves. He make them to be strangers. Enemy spiritually, enemy physically, wherever they are, God is not a respectable person. The enemy that says that you will not prosper in your life, spiritually, physically, in your business, in your education, in your marriage, in every area pertaining to you as an individual or collectively. Ask the Lord, the time has come to recompense evil for the wicked. And because of their wickedness, the Lord will catch them. Talk to the Lord. They that trust the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abide there forever. As the mountain is round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people, henceforth and forevermore. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. As long as they have not put forth their into iniquity. Talk to the Lord. Your deliverance is now, not when I finish praying. Kariso Claim your victory. Start claiming it. Have, I'll have victory in my home. I have victory in the life of my wife. I have victory in the life of my husband. Anything tormenting you, I have victory over it. Life of my children, life of my education, the life of everything that Satan has done, to begin to claim victory over them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In your head as well. Amen. Amen. Let's sit it. Why the victory? You may ask. Because they carried their problem to God. They reported the adversary to the Lord. All the enemies, they reported them. They did not dwell on the enemy, they do, rather they dwell on God. They focus on God. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mosiah, which cannot be removed but abide there forever. As the mountain is not about Jerusalem, so the Lord is drawn about his people, his fault and forevermore. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Let the righteous put for their little iniquity. As long as iniquity is not in your life, there is no way the rod of the wicked can rest upon you. That's some one to five from one to three. Be part. And so shall it be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us focus on the law, not the problem. Let's focus on what the word says, not what the circumstances says. We know that the adversary is in, in charge of circumstances. Don't focus on sickness. Don't take your eyes away from sickness. Any wrong diagnosis given to you and it does not... And the, the diagnosis of the word of God is what you will agree. My son attend to my words. He cried thy ears unto my say. 
Let them not depart from their eyes. Keep them in the midst of their eyes. For their life unto those that find them are held unto all their bones, held to all their flesh. Proverbs 4, 22-22. That's your medicine. That's your prescription for the true believers. As I, continue, as I usually say, the prescription given to you, there's another prescription that can override it. Don't focus on that. Remember whatsoever you focus on, you become. Hallelujah. Amen. Say Jericho, amen. amen. Say, Lord, I focus on you. Not on my sickness. Not on sickness. Don't even say my sickness. Don't claim it. We don't focus on the sickness. Because the sickness has a name. There's a name above that name. When I mention your name, sickness will disappear. Who said that? So as I'm just preaching and etc., the Lord reminded me that you forgot to say something. When I deliver she, thank you, Holy Spirit. What did he say? Say, as you were praying, I forgot it. Say, as you were praying for her, a spider fell out of her leg. Spider, which I forgot, just reminded me. Spider fell out of her leg. I caused that spiritually. I saw it. And I caused that fiber, uh, that spider to be consumed with unquenchable fire of the Holy Spirit. And as I was praying this prayer, her kappa, physically, the spider now fell down. Are you hearing? As the prayer was going on, spider fell down physically, and I kill it. Just as one of my sons, after I ministered deliverance unto him, and the Lord knew his heart, he followed him home. In the morning, he thought it was a bed, and when he pulled it out, live snake. Were you not here? Yeah. When he gave that testimony, he took the, 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 the snake and put it out and killed that snake. And that was the end of how many years of torment? How many years of bad business? He said, Mommy, if I open my, uh, the, my shop, they will pass it. Nobody called me. But after that deliverance, he has gone back to square one. Everyone business is here this morning. They have not been having I'm not be moving up. They are pronounced setback. I condemn it in Jesus' name. Amen. From now on, your business will soar into the sky. Amen. Like the mighty eagle. Amen. And it will never come down. Amen. And you will come here to give a testimony. Whatsoever that has been hindering that business, I root it from his forty foundation. Amen. And I lay it back onto the foundation of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Say Jericho, amen. amen. Say Jericho, I receive it in Jesus' name. And so shall it be. Amen. Amen. I only have two points. One point adversities and praises defined. So we are defined what's adversity, what, what's a praises. Adversity can be defined as a difficult or unpleasant situation. That's one experience. Without even, you don't even know. It will not give you any sign, any warning that, oh, this is going to happen. Adversity can be temporary or permanent, depending on the way you address it. If you address it biblically, it will be temporary. If you address it wordly, based on human counsel, instead of taking counsel from the Lord, this is not somebody who has been seeing the doctor for 35 years. Nothing happened. And not even in Nigeria here. Abroad. In our Sunday message, said, when I heard your voice, as you were preaching, as you were preaching, something left me, 35 years. Something left me, said, after he has left me, said, since then, I'm not back to the way God wants me to be. Is that not the testimony? Is that not the testimony? This happened abroad. Where they have the Fantastic doctors and everything you can think of drugs. Amen? amen. Say Jericho, amen. amen. So from King Jehoshaphat's experience, no teacher can, again can shake you. When you get home, take that chapter again and read it seriously. You will see that each verse is begin to unfold himself. And then we penetrate into your innermost being, your spirit. And your spirit begin to dissect it. As he's cutting it, what of God, what is it? It's a sword. 
and it's a hammer, and it's a fire. As this thing begins to happen, deliverance will come in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, you have suffered, depended on God, and reminded him of his faithfulness. You are to take, give it, that's why if you, are, you are not giving testimony, you better go and repent. This is what you have done for us. This is what you have done for us. Are you not the one who brought us here? The same testimony we are giving to the Lord. The Lord brought us to this land, 540 Koloduru. We don't know where, where this land was. For two years, after the revelation to me, I started looking for it. We went into fasting, the whole church. When I'm not seeing anything, I personally took it upon myself. I went on the fast for two weeks. Fasting and crying to the Lord. It was on the, seven, on the last day of that fasting, prayer in the night, in the day. And the next thing, my phone rang. Said, I heard you have been looking for a property for the church. I have four. You want to come and look at them and choose which one you want? I said, of course, who are you, sir? I've never met him before. You know, when God wants to help, he can use somebody he never knew to bring deliverance to you. What time will you be in your office? And give me the address. I gave everything to him. But after the phone was over, I went to him and said, Lord, I thank you. You are the one who sent him. I know you very well. You are the one who sent him. The answer has come. I left one very early. Even before I got there, the jeep was outside waiting for me. A security man came to me and said, a man came very early in the morning, he said he has an appointment with you. I said, he swim and he said, I came in. I said, okay. I didn't waste my time. Ask him to call me, to call me, to call me. And he came. Discussed with him and etc. And after the discussion, I said, are you ready? Can we postpone? We are not postponing anything. We are now, put my bag somewhere, I said, enter, the, I enter his car. I said, I'm not taking my car, I will take your car. Went to the first one at K Village, 24 acres. I said, it's not this. Another one at Antony, very, there's no beauty there. Said, the one the Lord showed me, Jesus came to me and showed me himself. He was carrying a camera and started walking around this place here. Started from the gate. Come at the gate. As he stood on the gate, start from there and walk around the entire compound. This was, this was the bush where we came in. And when he eventually now finished walking, so I should be following him. I was walking before him. When we now came to the front of that gate, he told me, say, look up. And I look up. As I look up, the building has been demolished now, just like the one we have at the back. How you are going to know where I want you to be? I said, yes, Lord. And he now came back again and turned back and came to where the gate is. He stood at the left side of it. He said, watch the gate. And as I was watching the gate, as he did this, the gate started rolling. It's not the one you open. It started rolling, rolling, rolling. Now come to the end. He said, two signs I've given you. How you will know where your... The, my church, not me, his own church would be. The sign, the grain, and the gate. And the revelation, it's not a dream. And the revelation disappeared. So for two years, I said, is it in London? Is that where we are? Don't ever give up when God gave revelation. Never. Never. If you give up, it's your advice to you. Wherever you go, he will not be there. You will pay for not obeying what he has said. Long story short, this man took me to the tree. I said, this is not what he showed me. I said, what, what God showed me, there's a two buildings, a very giant building there. I said, bush, I saw bush. I said, this place, there's no bush, no building. He said, well, the only one left, I, I, I want to show you, you can't afford it, very expensive. I said, I'm not the one paying for it. Jesus is the one paying for it. There's something you cannot pay for. You just look at me. You're surprised. I said, I'm not the one. It's not for me. But when we now came here, the gate was locked. Bush. I saw the bush. I said, thank God. Then the next thing, he started calling security man. Tenamo. Tenamo. Tenamo started running from the back. 
And when he got to the gate, he put his hand, and the gate now started ruling. I, said, I just knelt down outside. I didn't wait to come and pray inside so that people would not see me. Who cares? On the main road, in front of the gate, I knelt down and said, Lord, you finally brought us to where you want us to be. I just want to thank you. Amen? I just want to thank you. As I was talking, he said, look up. And when I now look up, I saw that green thing. I said, sir, let's go inside. I started walking about a few minutes. I said, I'm not going to go anywhere. This is what I want. He looked at me. He said, do you know how many millions? I said, did I not tell you before I'm not the one paying for it? He said, you did. I said, lead me to the owner of the place. Long story short, this is where we are today. Amen. Amen. This is where we are today. This is not an ordinary church. Everything about this church, by his grace, is Jesus who is doing it. Amen? Amen. It was an adversity for me. And before this revelation was given, I made up my mind that I was going to go and pay for where we were at 108 Western Avenue. I, was, I collected the money. I've told the landlord that we are going to buy the property. I'm coming back there by 9 o'clock in the morning. By 2 a.m., the Lord met me in my house when I was praying. He didn't tell me to go or not to go. He came to the Joe Legba, a Western Avenue church, opposite police barrack, and started demolishing the church. He started with my pulpit, my marble pulpit that I ordered from me. But he demolished it. I'm watching. Break them to pieces. Then after that, he now started, he came to my office and destroyed the whole office. And the wall that is surrounding the entire church, he destroyed them. And then I was just watching him. And after that, a trailer I have never seen on earth, greater than any trailer you can ever find, drove into the church. And then all the things in the church, the angels came five. I started packing them out. What else do I want? Do I have to go and fast about it? That, that, that's not me. If you don't want to do something, you want to start fasting. No. I said, Lord, you win. I said, I'm not going there to buy that property. You don't want me to, to go and buy it. That's what you are telling me. So in the morning, I went there. I told the man, I still carry my, the money there. He says, I'm very sorry. I just want to show you this is the money. I wanted to come and pay for the property. But the Lord spoke to me that doesn't want me to be here again. And whatever he says, that's what I will say. He took a deep breath. He said, are you sure it's the Lord who told you? I didn't answer him. He just gave him back his money. And I left. In obedience to that, that is where this other revelation I've been telling you came up. You must live in absolute perfect obedience to God. If you want to see the power of God demonstrated in the Bible, don't buy any counseling from outside, from neighbors, from friends. Amen? Amen. So, so, Romans 5, 15 says, said, Rejoice evermore. I say what? Rejoice. Go to 1 Peter 1, 7. 1 Peter 1, 7. 1 Peter 1, 7. First Peter 1, 7. You cannot live in this world and say, oh, we be bread and butter. No. First Peter 1 says that the trial of your faith be much more worth precious than the gold that perishes. Though it may be tried with fire, may be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of the Lord Jesus. What is the Lord talking about? If you allow God to have his own way in every trial you are going to, at the end, what is waiting for you at the end is greater than what you can ever imagine. Blessings is waiting. Promotion is waiting. Good health is waiting. Everything you can have, no human being can ever give you is waiting. But you need to go through it. I told you one time, I was praying, praying, praying. A white cooker appeared in the spirit realm. And the one who put a pot on the cooker. And the cooker was cooking, cooking. So I said, let me go and see whether the food I'm cooking has, is done. Silver big pot. 
And when I went, I lifted, I lifted him, cover up. There was something inside. So I came back and said, Lord, I don't understand. This pot has been in the cooker for so long. What is happening? He said, you are the pot. He said, I am the pot. He said, I'm cooking. You are not done yet. You are not done yet. I said, me? He said, yes. I'm still cooking you with fire. Am I saying a fry pan today? No. He has lifted me up. And the Lord will lift you up. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So rejoicing in trial is important. Because... Uh, if you rejoice, you remain faithful to the Lord in the midst of trials. And as the time goes on, there will be purification. Faith is a purifier. It will lift up your faith higher and higher and higher. Do not yield to the inclination of your flesh. Do not obey the voice of the flesh. The flesh is not a spirit. It can profit nothing. The flesh will tell you, do it this way. Do it that way. Say this one. Say that one. Repent. You are not to obey the flesh. You are to obey your spirit. Because your spirit has the power to quicken what is dead and bring it to life. Say Jericho, amen. amen. That's what we are talking about. Very important. Remaining faithful to Christ in the midst of your adversity, not only purify your faith, what happens? It will bring you closer to the Lord. The Lord will say, I can trust him, I can trust her. He's still waiting for me, I can trust her. Point two. Praises, not point two. This point one. Adversity and praises define. I'm defining it now. I want to define praises. Well, we'll give that definition in uh, Psalm 9, from verses 1 to 2. Go, follow me to Psalm 9. Psalm 9. Psalm 9, verses 1 to 2. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart, not with your lips. With my whole heart, I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. I will rejoice, I will praise him. In everything, first Thessalonians 5 18 says, in everything, not when things are good, when things are worse. That's when you are to praise God. Don't pick your phone. I start phoning this phone, phone it. I want my. All my sons, they don't phone me concerning your wives. I'm not interested. I'm not your wife. I am your mother. When something is wrong, the two of you settle it up. If you phone me, I will not pick the phone. I so spoke to my only daughter. I have said, don't phone me. I start reporting your husband to me. I will not pick it. If your husband phone to me, I will not pick it. I say, it's your wife. I'm not your wife. So you better learn how you will live your life. If the Lord reveal it to me that I should intervene during revelation, I say, this is what is happening. That's a different case. Not me, I say, this is what my wife did, this is what my husband did, my husband did, my husband did. Can he change what you want to change? He will make it worse. He will give you wrong counsel. Let's say there's a man or the woman that walked on a counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is that man. The man is blessed. Who does not walk in the fleshy counsel? The person you are reporting them to, they don't have the Holy Spirit. Even if you have the Holy Spirit, try and fight it out. So what I did is to make sure that they know God. I sent scriptures to them. They look at, we are the last days, so Jesus is coming very soon. It's not your mighty house or whatever. It's not interested. Stand up. And see the salvation of the Lord. Stand up in the spirit, not in the physical. Say praise the Lord. I'm preaching good, but you are not answering. Because I'm talking to you. That's it. Because when you're preaching, it's touching, you're touching the areas you don't want me to talk about, you will not clap. In everything, we are to give thanks. It's the will of God concerning any of his children. Praises comes automatically as you begin to thank the Lord. You don't just start praising immediately. I don't know whether you have experience. If you want to actually praise from your spirit, begin to thank him first. That's number one. Oh, I thank you for what you are doing. Oh, I thank you for this one. Oh, I thank you. Not only yourself, but thank him for the people you are meeting. I thank the Lord for the vast water ministry. I thank the Lord for the people of God. I thank the Lord for taking us to Monday. I thank the Lord for the new thing he's doing. I thank the Lord for my children. 
I thank the Lord for, they don't allow me to weep over them. I thank the Lord for my, 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 my spiritual children. I will not weep over any of, my, any of you, Jesus. Name. So the thanksgiving came as I'm thank, thanking the Lord. It's safe. It's all we just come from nowhere. That's what I mean from the spirit. Not the one you dance and shake yourself over here. So they say we should be praising him. When you begin to thank him, this thing just come up from your heart. And when you begin to see what comes out of your heart, it's a different revelation that we flow in. Not just praising him, your spiritual eyes will be open. Spiritual ears will be open. You start hearing the heaven. You start seeing the things you have never seen in your life. Say Jericho, amen. amen. How many of you want to experience this? How many of you? Receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go to Hebrew chapter 13, 15 to 16. Hebrew chapter 13. Let's look at 15. 15 to 16. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips. Give me thanks to his name. Are you ready? Give me thanks to his name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is what? Well, please. But to thank him and please, please to him. If you don't understand, you just say, my, my, the, the message today, we should be praised. You just center, begin to clap, begin to sing. You, you'll be dancing. That's not the song and praises I'm talking about. Praises are sacrifice unto God, declaring who he is and what he does. And is he replaceable? No other God can replace him. It's the almighty God. Every other God from this day, including Satan, they are created. The only one that's never created is God Almighty. And that's who you belong to. And that's the one you will fear. No Satan. No God like him. From east to west, from north to south. At the heart of every believer, relationship with God is the requirement to praise God. We are to praise him. God honor praises because his divine deeds and character will reveal as we begin to praise God. Praise starts with an understanding of who God is based on what you have seen and what you have done, seeing God did to you. And it should be based on his own words, not your own words. See, the praises we are used to, dancing, etc., is your service for. That one does not move God. It's the one where he begins to use his word. He said, I magnified my word above all things. Magnifies his word. Praises include a great reverence for who God is, which in turn imparts true wisdom to us. So praises express happiness or relief that something he did, he did something, and he's still going to do more. We saw this in life of uh, a gay once more, our text, Claude, uh, Joel Shaphat and the children of Judah, what he did for them. They continue to praise God and they will never give up in the name of Jesus. We also saw what happened in the book of Acts. Uh, let's go to Acts chapter 16, quickly. Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, quickly. Look at 25 to 26. Acts 16, 25 to 26. And at midnight, Paul and Sarah prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. It was not a small voice. So we don't want anybody to hear because they come and kill us. Already these people that are singing praises, their hands has been chained. Their feet chained. They cannot move in the prison. But they are still praising God. Yes, I come, sir, no matter what you are going through, don't shut up your mouth. That's what said, that's what adversity does. Shut your mouth. Why do you want to see praise this wicked God? Is it not the one who brought you to where you are? Start blaming everything on your God. No, no, no. Look at what they did, 25. At midnight, Paul and Sarah prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoner heard them and suddenly, say suddenly. Suddenly. Shout suddenly. Suddenly. Shout suddenly. Suddenly. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were were shaking. And immediately, say immediately. immediately. Say immediately. immediately. 
All the doors were open. Every closed door in your life be open now in Jesus' name. The doors of business be open in Jesus' name. The doors of your womb barren be open in Jesus' name. The door of sicknesses close down in Jesus' name. Everything that will not bring glory to God in your life, and they shut the door, be open in Jesus' name. And every door that will disglorify God in your life, I lock it with the key of David in Jesus' name. And never to be reopened forevermore in Jesus' name. Say, to us, amen. Lord, the doors were open and everyone bands were loose. If there's any band in your hand, fall off in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Jericho, amen. 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 I won't have time because I'm looking at the time. When you get, you can read Exodus chapter 15. You really want to see something happen in your situation that no human being can do anything about. Exodus 15. You read it from verses 9 to 21. I'll just give an explanation. When they crossed the, the, red, the Red Sea, Mariam took up a tambourine and began to play. And the children of Israel joined her. They began to thank God for what God did. No ship, no boat. The sea parted. Your sea has parted for you in Jesus' name. I'm just declaring a prophetic word. And when I declare it, it's established in heaven. And as they begin to thank the Lord for crossing the Red Sea, no boat, no whatever, rather the sea parted, they walk on the sea as if ordinary ground. And they came out, no one drowned. And as they came out, they stood, they were watching Pharaoh and all the Egyptians, they drowned. Your enemy, they already drowned in Jesus' name. What did they do? They take tambourine and begin to pray. Praise God. Jesus broken every fetters. Jesus has broken every fetters. My Jesus has broken every fetters. He has set me free. I will sing hallelujah. So I will sing hallelujah. Oh, I will sing. Ah, hallelujah. He has set me free. Amen. Amen. That's what praises can do. Now, point two reason for praising God, especially during the adversity. I will give you only four. Number one. Confidence that brings victory is sure. You have the confidence. Just like Joshua Shepard and the people. It's sure. Second Chronicle 20, 22, 24. Number two, God's purpose for allowing the adversity is revealed to you. His glory and it's ascertained. We saw that in Acts 16, 25 to 26 and then 30. The purpose of these innocent people beating and chain was for one person. Or one family to bring salvation to that hope. That's the purpose. Number three, praise nullify fear. Psalm 56, verse 4, praises nullify fear. Number four, praising God during adversity, we turn the enemy against each other to destroy them. Second Chronicle 20, 20 to 23. And when you begin to put this four in action, you come and give me a testimony of what the Lord did. During the message on how to praise God during adversity. It has already started. As already started. When that last song I sang was going on, something began to happen. People were loose from their bondage. So they laid their hands. Something was just falling off. Amen. And you see them jumping in the spirit. So something has happened. Why not stand up and begin to thank the Lord? Just thank the Lord. If you are in this service, you are not born again. Today is your day. No time to waste. You have not given your life to Christ. Just quickly run now. The time to break every chase and shackles. Today is the day. Begin to thank the Lord for what he has done. And thank him again once more. And if you are not born again, come out quickly. So that to receive Jesus as your Lord 
and personal savior. Wherever you are in this service worldwide, it is time right now to renounce sin and take Jesus as your Lord and personal savior. If you are there, repeat after me, Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. I confess all my sins to you. I repent of them. I ask for forgiveness. Forgive me, Lord. Give me the grace never to go back to sin anymore. I believe that you died for me on the cross of Calvary. Wash me with your precious blood. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And make me to live for you all the days of my life. Thank you for bringing me from darkness to light. Today, I receive you and accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. All things are passing, we all things have become new. Fill me, Lord, with the Holy Spirit. And write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Thank you for taking my name from the book of death to the book of life. I will praise you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, I am born again. Amen and amen. As you pray this prayer with me, I believe you are born again. And congratulations. Don't switch your screen off yet. If you look at the screen, send your, text, your testimony to the church. Email us. The Pastor Water Ministry email address will be on the screen. And also, require, request, I mean, the salvation book, the greatest man of which you have just received. It's a booklet. It's free for you. Even the postage is free. Send for it. We'll send it to you immediately. And as you do so, you will walk in the, limb, in the, in the light of the Lord. Don't start looking for a church so close to the house. If the Holy Ghost is not there, look for a, a church. Wherever it is, look for such church so that you can be in the presence of the Lord all the days of your life. Don't switch me off here. We are still praying. If you have any need in your lives, anywhere you are in this service, now is this time to pray about it. Remember, how do you behave in the time of your adversity? Are you going to go and lock yourself in the room? Put out the light off to be in darkness. When you are in darkness, you are inviting Satan to come. Rather, put the light on and begin to dance to the glory of God. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, I can do all things. Through Christ, which strengthened me. This day, O oh Lord, I have received strength. When I came this morning, I was weak in my spirit because of problems, because of the adversities that I have been going through. Even during this message, my chains were broken off, my feet were loose, my hands that were tied were loose. Then I can go up above my problems and soar into the sky like the eagles. Victory is mine. Defeat is not for me. I am a victor. I'm not a victim. I am an overcomer. I will never be overcome. I will never be defeated. I am successful. My business has taken a U-turn. As I'm in the church right now, the angel on a summit, they've gone back to my shops. They've gone back to my marketplace. Everything that is making me not to prosper, the angel is removing them and replacing them with what God wants. Then you call your shop and your, your name of that shop by name and say, Do you hear what I've just said? Go and prosper in Jesus' name. You are no longer a defeat. You are now a victor. And therefore, when I come to you tomorrow morning, when I open my shop, the glory of the Lord will fill the shop. And when I open that shop, People will be coming from the north, south, east, and west. They want to come and buy my goods. In the market, customer will come from anywhere. And when at home, phone call will be phoning me. Every area that the enemy has shot, check with your destiny, is open again for his own glory. Begin to pray and talk to the Lord. That Lord, I will never doubt you. I believe, oh Lord, that this service is for me. And now we come to give a testimony. The body won't receive your babies right now. Because it is a, a, an adversity, barrenness adversity. The Lord has removed it and put a brand new womb, a brand new sperm for you. Claim it and begin to walk with that victory the Lord has given you this morning. 
in the area of head, condemned the head, caught the sickness by his name. Today I have been healed because with his tribe I'm healed. You are no longer, you cannot stand against me anymore. I'm an overcomer. I'm not a defeat. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, lift up your hands and begin to thank him. Even as we have said it and as we have prayed, the Lord has answered us in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. Let's close our eyes and let's pray for a moment in the Lord. We thank you, Father, for your daughter that you have used. And we pray in the name of Jesus, the Lord, you will replenish our anointing in Jesus' name. From strength to strength, from grace to grace, and from glory unto glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise God. Put your hands together for the Lord. You are welcome to church. I want you to put your hand into your pocket or you bring your device out so that you do your offering. If you want to pay online, the account number is right there on the screen so that you do your offering. If you are in the church, you are packaging your offering, speak to your offering by yourself. Bless that offering with your mouth and ask God to receive it from you. After you have done that, I want you to stand up and wave it to the Lord. Wave it to the Lord. Wave it to the Lord. Wave it to the Lord and let us give with a powerful song. You are marvelous, yeah. You are marvelous, yeah. You are marvelous, yeah. Marvelous, yeah. You are marvelous, yeah. You are marvelous, yeah. You are marvelous, yeah. You are a marvelous God. You are marvelous, yeah. You are marvelous, for the hands for ironic blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord be gracious unto thee. Amen. The Lord make his countenance to shine upon thee. Amen. May the Lord lift up his face upon you Amen. and give you good peace. Amen. The peace that passeth all understand. Amen. Receive it right now in Jesus' name. Of the seven generations. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church. My name is Bukola Oloko, and I am your anchor for today's Freedom News. Now to the headlines. Supernatural Healing School, Monday Crusade, Freedom Night. Let's take a short break. The news continues when we return. You have spent your time asking, what is Rivers all about? What do they believe? Are they real? Or are they pretenders? Can I be a part of them? This and many more questions are bracing your mind. Wonder no more because we've got you covered. You are important to us. We will not take you for granted because you are a member of this family. Welcome home. Welcome home is our series for this month of July. It is specially curated for your convenience. So relax and ride along as we welcome you 
home. Welcome back. The Supernatural Healing School is a spiritual clinic inspired by the Holy Spirit to cater for all your spiritual needs. It holds every Tuesday in church from 8 a.m. Monday Crusade. In accordance with divine instructions, the church will be engaging in another round of Monday Crusade on Adjusa Street, Monday, Maryland. Date is the 11th and 12th of August by 5 p.m. Freedom Night. Freedom Night service is the church's monthly night vigil. The July edition comes up on the 29th of July, 2022 by 10 p.m. Flow Midweek service is the church's Bible study service. It holds every Wednesday on site and online from 5 p.m. If you're worshiping with us for the very first time today, I am excited to reveal this to you. You are an answer to our prayers, and we are very pleased to have you. This is Rivers of Living Water Ministries, and our vision here is to set the captives free, heal the sick, and bring lost souls to the kingdom of God so that everyone can experience total freedom in Christ. You are in the right place. You are going to testify soon, and we can't wait to celebrate with you. Fill your mind with powerful books written by Pastor Amanda Oguro and other anointed men of God. They are readily available at the bookshop. The healing bundle prepared by our senior pastor under the influence of the Holy Spirit is still available. Please meet any of the ushers for a free copy. Also, if you want to partner with the church to produce more copies of the healing bundles, give your details and the amount you would like to support with to any of the ushers or make a direct payment to the church account details shown on the screen. Thank you. Penel Prayer holds every week on Mondays to Fridays from 5.30 a.m. to 6 a.m. on Zoom. The link to join this prayer is posted on RLWM Transformation Hub daily. To join the RLWM Transformation Hub, please give your name and WhatsApp phone number to any of the ushers and you will be added. Also, our Global Family Altar holds every day of the week from 8.45 p.m. to 9 p.m. This is a family devotional where we go through the Bible and pray together as a family. Remember, the family that prays together wins together. Prayer chain. The prayer chain is a prayer movement initiated by Pastor Amanda Oguro under the influence of the Holy Spirit. The aim is to ensure that prayers are ongoing in the church every single day of the week. Last week, was the turn of the worship division to pray. While this week would be the turn of the children teachers as well as the academy teachers. Please choose a convenient day of the week, a convenient time, as well as a prayer partner to ensure that you do not break the prayer chain. God bless you as you comply. That brings us to the end of today's Freedom News. Once again, my name is Bukola Oloko. Do have a great week ahead. God bless you. Hallelujah. I declare to all of you sitting down looking at me that every gift of God in your life will find expression. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Let us welcome Sister Ellen Ugbome for her testimony. Let's put our hands together for her.
been faithful to me, Lord, but for your amazing grace. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. I am here before you, brethren, to thank the Lord for his faithfulness in my life. I want to thank the Lord for the anointing oil that was concentrated in this ministry. I want to thank the Lord for the lessons we receive for the blood of Jesus. I want to give glory to Almighty God that I'm a member of Rivers of Living Water Ministry. I want to thank God that I'm still standing in the faith. I want to thank God for the preservation of my life. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, join me to thank the Lord. He has added another 365 days to my age. I celebrate him. He has been a great God to me. Father, I thank you. I lie down before you, Lord. I worship and adore you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together as we welcome Brother Danny Olasam for his own testimony. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, happy Sunday, everyone. I want to testify to what God did in my life um, two weeks ago. I, I left a uh, church. I was traveling. So I was going back to um, Lekki to like take my clothes and travel. So before I left, I, 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 I was feeling scared. I felt something. I, in fact, I saw an accident, but I just, I just took it off my mind. So while going, mommy now, like she called me. She prayed for me. She told me where, where am I going. I told her I was traveling. So she prayed for me. And while I was going, when I got to the third Milan Bridge, I was feeling dizzy because I didn't sleep much. Saturday stroke, Sunday before I came to church. So I was feeling really dizzy, so I slept off a little bit, and immediately something woke me up, and I saw the driver was looking at the phone. He was pressing phone while on Third Milan Bridge, and the next thing I saw another car coming, like the car was so close to us that I had to push the steering myself, and I, I was like, what are you looking at? Why are you on your phone? Like, it was, if I didn't push him, I don't know what would have happened, and immediately I got into the studio, and F Sharp called me first. I, I, I got calls from people that they prayed for me in church. Uh, Mama prayed for me. Mommy, thank you very much. Thank you so much. I was, I was like, if not for the prayer of everyone, maybe I would have, my enemy would have been dead by now. But I give God the glory. I thank God for, for keeping my life, keeping me safe up to this moment. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. How many of us were in church two Sundays ago when Mama said, was asking for his name that we should pray for him? God loves every one of us here. And we thank God for his covering in this church. That covering will not be removed by Satan in Jesus' name. We soak every testimony in the blood of Jesus. If you are under this covering, don't leave this covering. It's a real covering, and God will continue to bless you in the name of Jesus. Before we put the service to a close for the first service, I would like to give the following announcement. But first of all, we want to welcome those that are fellowshipping with us for the first time. Today is your first Sunday in the church. Can we just, just wave at us? We want to welcome you and identify you, please, wherever you are. Today is your God bless you, sir. Let's reach out to him. Welcome. Let's welcome him. Welcome to the rivers, rivers of living water, a citadel of Holy Ghost. You are welcome, beloved. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the rivers. Welcome to the rivers. Yes, it's the promised land. The promised land. You're welcome. You're welcome, my brother. This is Rivers of Living Water Ministry, and our vision is to set the captive free, to heal the sick, and to bring the lost souls to the kingdom of God, so that everyone will experience total freedom in Christ. If you don't have a permanent place of worship, feel free to join us, because the Lord 
would bless you richly in this place. Don't be in a hurry to leave. After this service, our host team, they will meet with you and tell you more about our church. God bless you a million times in Jesus' name. Amen. We have heard about the prayer chain, academic teachers and children teachers. Let's take the baton and don't let us drop don't let us drop it in Jesus' name. From Monday, tomorrow, you are going to be coming for your prayer. God will give you the grace and bless you as you do that. In Jesus' name, amen. Please, if you are a member of anniversary committee, immediately after third service, we will have a short meeting. After third service, a short meeting. When we start meeting like that, you know that anniversary is fast approaching. The church anniversary is in August. And so please, let's prepare ourselves as a church. Praise God. It's in August, by the grace of God. Please prepare yourself as we celebrate another year in rivers of living water. Shall we stand up as we bring this first service to a close? Philippians chapter 4. Verse 4, let's go. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Sound of rejoicing will not depart out of your life, out of your family, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore in Jesus' name. Surely, Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless everyone.